Faders of the Lost Art. All right, what's up, everybody? Welcome to Faders of the Lost Art. Proud to announce another great show in the books. Our co-host Ken Lewis, Farid Salama, Bob Horn, and we've got the legendary, legendary guitar player, mixer, engineer, crazy, crazy man himself, <laughs> Mike Orlando, in the building today. A big shout out to all our sponsors, all the studios, that most Echo Bar, Criteria, of course, some of the companies that help us out, Arturia, Avid, some of the gear that we use every single day. Um, but yeah, without further ado, let's get right down to it, baby. Welcome to the show, Mike Orlando. Appreciate you for being here. Uh, thank you very much, man. It's a, it's an honor and a pri privilege to be hanging with you, great guy. Thank you for having me. Appreciate Welcome. you coming. Thanks, man. Yeah. Oh, yeah. All right, well, so how are we kicking things off? What's everybody uh, been working on? What are you excited about? Mm. Oh, who's so going my first? boy... I'll I'll go first. I actually had a a list written out last time. Let me, you know, what, let me grab it real quick. I had my list written. Out. I was like, you know what, Ken's gonna ask about, getting, <laughs> like, what what are we getting done? And I was like, let me put because whenever well, gotta, I'm on the spot, I gotta put my I'm gear stuck. shopping list together after after every episode. <laughs> oh, yeah, I yeah. just go and buy a plug in or two. I'm like, God, oh dude. yeah, it's every single dude. Every conversation is great. Um, yeah. I've been doing country with uh, artist named Zinn. And Alex Zalen, a homie, and Boy Bennett, the really great producers. They um they did the lamp program with Stargate. Amazing, amazing stuff. Um, something that they kind of just brought to the US. Super cool. Um, what else we got going on? Sick. Pop stuff. Um, we got BB. Oh, forgot all their names. Darn it. All right, we're gonna skip me for right now and I'll come back. <laughs> Well, you working? We know you working. You we oh you no, we're, where's my other notebook? <laughs> I got my other notebook with my actual clients, but I wrote it down on my little, <laughs> on my little to do pad over here. I was like, Ken's gonna ask this one, so I'll, right here at the bottom, I'm gonna. <laughs> I love that though. Ken kind of like you know keeps us all on our toes. You know. Oh like, yeah. Sure. <laughs> That's good. Though. For Farid and I have been doing country too. Farid did a mix for me, which was oh, cool. Awesome. Being a mixer, being a mixer, having a mixer do a mix for you. Uh, <laughs> is it? did you produce it or what's your... yeah I, I produced it and fareed mixed uh not only my song but other songs for the same artist so very cool um, no it yeah. was a great experience great experience i learned a ton and you know bob just laid it out like barely had to do much you know so. i tried not to be too much of a mix engineer like taxi <laughs> driver you know no nah, no worries man if you if you saw the changes I've gotten recently for some other mixes, it's just like paragraphs and I'm just like, and you know, like, you know, a lot of, a lot of times some guys will have their mix engine or like an engineer that is their like buddy or something like, Oh God. <laughs> and they go in, you know, they're like, yo, get the first <laughs> syllable, you know, 0. 0.2 DB up. And it's just like, man, just, just have them mix it. Like by all means, you know, like, right, right. <laughs> But <laughs> shit you go through. Yeah. That's a pain, man. <laughs> <laughs> well, sure. Yeah, I, I just uh I just mixed uh a song called Closer for RM from BTS. Uh they just dropped the video for it. And uh, oh, the video was uh it's a the video is like a mini movie. They took some feature film uh in Korea and they re edited the film to make the storyline to the lyric makes sense and it's man it's like stunning to see i absolutely love it's it. called closer yeah it's called closer we uh, we did oh, a separate we up. yeah we did a separate mix for the video than we did for the album and uh so which i thought was interesting it's probably hands down the darkest bts song i've ever mixed we shaved oh, all the top awesome. end off of it made it like right really, on my alley really rich oh, <laughs> okay. mike what have you been working on dude I, I have a lot, man. I've, I'm doing like four albums of my own at this time. Um, I have a bunch of clients in here, but um, I'm doing an album right now uh, with Corey Glover from Living Color. Oh, yeah. Nice. So it's, uh, oh. it is off the chart, man. It's uh, He's one of the greatest vocalists of all time, you know, um, and the nicest guy to work with. So we have a new band and we just had uh, our new drummer, this guy, Taekwon Jackson came in, uh, 
real incredible gospel drummer, but also, strangely enough, a hardcore drummer. <laughs> so it's like, wow. You know, he has the fastest feet and the craziest, uh, you know, he could match any lick I do, you know, on the drums. So that's um, amazing. Dude, Cold doing... Personality came yeah. out yeah. my freshman year at Berkeley. Oh, man. And I remember that was such a <laughs> moment. Man, oh my God. That's yeah. such a Dude, I... work with. Man, that's awesome. Yeah. I used to obsess over uh, Vernon Reed's guitar setup. I would read like Guitar yeah. Player magazine. And they yeah, had his whole rig, and it was a massive rig. Just I think like I read that too. Racks and racks and pedals. Oh, it's yeah. crazy. Yeah, it's yeah. still it's still big, man. And Doug uh, Doug's pedal board, the the bass pedal board is is even bigger, man. The, those guys oh, are wow. incredible. <laughs> they're, they're incredible, man. So, but, but it's what is it, it's it's a name? What's that? Oh, yeah. Didn't didn't Doug have uh, Doug Wimbish, right? Yeah, Doug Wimbish, Inc just yeah, okay. incredible, incredible player. That one of my favorite bands. So working with Corey is just. Uh, man it's a dream you know so we're That's doing awesome. it's heavy it's funky it's bluesy it's soulful it's everything you could think of um so i'm just having a ball with that i'm doing that i have another another a big metal kind of super group thing brewing here it's myself and uh phil demel from machine head who's an amazing guitar player and uh jason bittner on drums from a band called overkill and shadows fall and uh we're working uh, with with john bush from anthrax and armored saints so just grateful you know to be working with all these incredible talents in the rock, in the rock world you know so and i do everything here yeah at my place you I know my, my band yeah I, i've been doing everything for my band adrenaline mob you know since uh 2010 you know when we started with uh we had the incredible mike portnoy on drums and in, in, uh from dream theater and yeah. 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 so uh yeah, hey man, I'm just you know grateful and and I love doing it, and so lots so, of stuff happening over here. Your studio mostly specializes in live bands, then. I mean, that's it's what I do. Yeah, you know, but it's not a yeah a huge place. You know, I have a, a drum room back there, past the glass, and uh, right, and a vocal sitting, room past that. In front of and, a uh, VR. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, the dream tracking <laughs> console right know, there. That's great for yeah. drums for sure. Oh. It, it is cool yeah for drums it's it's super cool man you know i i had an ssl i, I had problems so I, before covid i i had it removed and uh got this and then took you know covid hit and i took like six seven months to sit here and literally recap it myself oh my wow. gosh ah, yeah it, it was fun man it yeah. was really fun i gotta say <laughs> and, believe it or not i know it sounds it's it's kind of like, uh, you know, it puts you in this mindset. You know, it's it's relaxing, actually, mm -hmm. to me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I can I know. <laughs> I mean, in that time period, I mean, that's yes, probably COVID. the coolest. That's probably the coolest thing you could do is get stuck with a console. That's yeah. it. it. It was like, well, what am I going to do? I, I was in I was in Europe. We're starting a 30 show tour with Mike Portnoy and uh, Sons of Apollo and my band and and we did Oslo in Sweden, and then they shut the country down. So oh. home I went and uh, was like, all right, I'm not missing anything. <laughs> yeah. Well, good so, that you could pivot from live touring back to the studio. I know a lot of live bands just couldn't yeah. do that. Oh, God, it was it was horrible. I mean, for a lot of my friends, they were down. You know, I, I was down for a while, but, yeah, I was able to do mixing and files and stuff and uh and I worked on a lot of albums myself, you know. I'm working on another album with Andrew Freeman, who is the vocalist of Last in Line, an amazing singer who basically Last in Line was the Ronnie James Dio band. And they took Andrew after Ronnie passed away and uh, Vinnie Apice, the drummer, and uh, Vivian Campbell. So uh, I did that with him. So COVID was like a writing, you know, mixing um recapping experience right <laughs> yeah. trying not to lose my mind <laughs> right so <laughs> as a guitar player i gotta ask you what do you yep. think of the u the uad ox you know the the ox box right yeah. is that what you, is that what they call yeah. it I, I have not gotten it yet and i gotta be honest I'm dying to get it i'm dying to hear this thing wait what's I, the ox uh, box it's it, a, it it takes the load of your amp so it acts like a speaker 
and then it yeah. has software that has speaker emulations. But yeah. the thing is, it's the best one I've ever heard for sure. I'm so you use like a yeah. a real like JCM eight hundred Marshall go into yeah. this box. It's about this big. It's fourteen hundred bucks. Has yeah. stereo out, and you can crank the amp and all the tubes and have your amp driving crazy. But yeah. you're going straight to Pro Tools, and it's got all the plugins, the UAD stuff. It's got all these cabinets and mics and you know room sound and all this stuff. And it's, it's kind of uh, like the what's that orange head that uh, everyone uses from what Orange? Was cam- Which was it? From, oh, the cam- from the company Orange. Yeah, I think Nico was about to say it. The Camper. Oh, I'm, I'm, so I'm the, confused. The Camper. I'm confused. The Camper yeah. emulates amps as well. So this you're using your real amps. You're just emulating the speakers, but yeah. big rock producers are stopping miking guitar cabinets. And I did a session at my buddy's house that has one, and we ran a Marshall and a Vox AC30 through it, and it was incredible just to have yeah. perfect miking every time, you know. So um, you plug your amps to to this little box? Yeah. Unit? Yeah. I've never even heard of those. This is amazing. Yeah, it's the OX, the OX. It's by UAD. Because I saw I the am, axe. Uh, I saw the axe. It takes away, like, guitar home or something. I still got to try that. I don't, I don't even know that one. Yeah, cool. I'm, dying to, to, I'm dying to use that now, man. I'm glad to hear that. Yeah. That's well, awesome. for yeah. both of you guitar players, have you guys messed with the plasma pedal yet? No. What's that? The plasma pedal is actual plasma. Like, you could see the tube, and it, like, is, you know, it's, I don't know. It's past my expertise but it is insane it shreds it's like it's it uh it's very much a distortion pedal and um there's a jack white edition or something like that that's also like a different color maybe one's like a yellow plasma one's like a white plasma i'm not sure but you want to hear the coolest part for us in the box digital folks you can go to their website and you upload your audio. I think you just got to wait in line or whatever, however long. But you can upload your audio and hear it go through the plasma pedal. So, like, nice. Ghetto Boy version would, you know, screen cap that and put that back in the mix. Don't tell him I did that. But <laughs> <laughs> Super dope. Super dope. Man, I, I'm a I'm a quad cortex guy right now. I, I did two tours last year with, with the quad cortex, which is this thing right here. Uh, you guys are it, up on it. Ooh. Uh-uh. I literally, I, 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 did like, I did like 30 shows in South America. This was in my backpack. Jesus. It was right after Ken asked about um if, if all the sound is in that box, pretty much. Oh, yes. So the quad cortex can capture an entire, like I can, I can mic up my cabinets, come through the Neve, and then into the quad cortex and capture a full perfect sound. Really? Uh, or, yeah, or I could capture it. What I do is I capture it without the cabinet as well. So in the quad cortex, it has four outputs. So two outputs go to the front of house guy and it's a full sound with the cabinet. And then two have no cabinet, but I go to the effects returns of two Marshalls or two 5150s live and they mic those. And I just use the power amp section. So this this little thing is it's it's replaced oh, my monster rig. You know that's wow. cool. Yeah, it's it's really great. It's from a company called Neural DSP. I love their plug. Their amp sims are what I've been using lately. They it's seem it, to be my go tos. They're just off the charts. That and I, I work with Neural um, as as an endorser, and, and I also work with STL Tones. And if you like the plugins, try STL tones, man. Okay. How, H- how, let's see, I'm gonna go broke on this show, man. I've been, <laughs> <laughs> I've been curious about STL tones. Phenomenal about company. Phenomenal. Really? Uh, they just put out this uh, this three amp suite of pretty much you know for rock guys for you know it's a Mesa boogie dual rectifier, the fifty one fifty and a PV triple X. Um, and it's probably the, one of the best I've ever heard. It's called the Josh Middleton Suite from STL Tones. Sick. And uh, man, it's just getting to the point where it's like, <laughs> it's it's an amp. It sounds exactly right. like an amp. Yeah. What are, you, what are your favorite amp sim clean tones? Oh, geez. You know, I mean, 
I'm back in the day, you know, I love the Fender, you know, twin reverbs. And I go back to the Eric Johnson kind of sounds with the, when he used to use that, those beautiful old Fenders and stuff. Um, mm -hmm. But there's so many, man. Um, you know, what's great about this company, they have the cloud and you go on there and everyone is uploading, you know, beautiful Vox AC30 tones. Oh, so they, and, they have patch sharing. That's really cool. Oh my God. Yeah. There's just so much out there. You know I mean? The classic, about that. The, the classic Roland JC 120s are always beautiful for clean guitars, you know. So, question, but, Mike. Yeah. Because I'm a, I'm a guitarist too. Like, uh, that's Excellent. that's that's what I started out. You, you played yeah. on that Pope. You played on that Pope record, right? Uh. Yeah, I did. I did that. Dude, that, that you that killed it, man. You killed it. <laughs> Huge fan. I, he was. Lou was like, "Hey, man, just do something." I'm like, "All right, what do you think about this?" He's like, "Done." The All intro right. is perfect, and I was like, "That has to be the the intro record for the album because oh, it's, thank you, it man. just sets the tone, you know." But you know, I I go back to uh, when I do the because you know you can't the shred stuff's cool and playing a million miles an hour and whatever it's got its thing it's cool and I love doing that, but I always go back to the beautiful uh, melodic. If, is very... if you could sing it, it's cool, right? Yeah, you know, top line. Or, yeah, if if you could hum it. You know, it, it takes me back to Joe Satriani, you know, uh, he was the dude, you know, when I was growing up, that was, Beast. yeah, just did all those beautiful songs that you could hum, you know. Right, right, right. It's not so, always yeah, about melody. Get them fast. people going doodly, doodly, weedy, 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 weedy. Yeah, and, and I, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I said that. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's definitely me. I mean, <laughs> I'm that guy, but, but again, you, you can't replace a nice melody. So, just... so a little nerd question. So, are you uh, ha are you still using lots of pedals like Boss? Like, are you do you still yeah. have a pedal board, or is that all replaced also? Um, well, you can capture pedals in this thing as well. But to be honest, I'll have the Quad Cortex on a pedal board. Um, I have like a, I have a signature signature Wah pedal out by Rocktron. So, of course, I have my Wah front and then i do uh i always use a digitech whammy pedal oh, which man. does the uh oh, octave yeah. up and down right? the red one yeah yeah <laughs> so you can't replace these things in my opinion you know they're got you and um yeah basic basic pedals i'll always keep you know because uh i use the quad cortex just for for basically tones and stuff and uh, amp sounds um some of their delays are really nice and uh and some some of the choruses are cool but I'm still a pedal guy, without a doubt, you know, and I come from, you know, if I took my, if I turned this camera over there, you'd see it's called Amp Alley. And, and that's my, <laughs> those, those are my beasts over there. And there's a wall of Marshalls and 5150s. That's <laughs> crazy. crazy. Well, what's your favorite Marshall? I'm an amp guy. Um, I mean, man, I could, I could bring you on over here and just kind of. Please, man. Show you. Here's. Here's this is amp, exciting. Here's <laughs> Amp Alley. I don't, nice. I don't know if you can see them all. There's yeah. a nice what's, that, what's that? What's the bottom, Marshall? Um, well, there's the white one. The bottom one there. Well, can you see that? Oh no, I, I guess the next one up. Uh, this one is a JVM 410. Okay. And then this is a JMD one that I love. Uh, JCM 800 to a 2000. And then I have the 5150s back there. Mm -hmm. And uh, I also have a 1970 and a 71 Plexi. Nice. So, yeah, I mean, so I'm an amp guy. <laughs> you know, Very nice. I, I love them. You, you can't beat it. Yeah. yeah I've got a I couple like of my... amps, but it's been Sims for forever it's just easier that's the to thing yeah like it's scary it's really scary yeah. how amazing they've become you know it's just it's undeniable even well, for... even the tube stuff what's that even the tube stuff you guys like what do you guys think uh comparing uh you know real tube sound to yeah you know, captured or emulated tube so um i mean it's good what do it's you think scary man? yeah that's it wow. <laughs> yeah. that's crazy man <laughs> I mean, you know, I'll take I'll take a sim and beef it up, you know, maybe put it through an eleven seventy six and give it a little oomph, something, you know, to to feel feel it have a little. I always had I always had this theory that if you had to do a song with like ten, fifteen, twenty guitar tracks, then amp sims would 
start to sound like amp sims. But if you're just doing like two or a solo, you know, yeah. or four tracks or something, then they sound amazing. Yeah. You know? I think it depends on so. how many guitars you use with how many amp sims. It's kind of I would predict that it's a lot like brass or strings, where if you take the same violin and you quadruple track one violin, it sounds chorusy. And if you yeah. track four violins playing the same part, it sounds like four beautiful violins. And I'm yeah. guessing if you play every part with one guitar through a whole, even different amp sims, it's going to get a little samey. All right. But if you got the number of guitars Mike has laying around, you're probably good. <laughs> it's just... You know, to be, to be honest, I, I'll, uh, I actually layer them. I'll do, a, I'll take that JMD 100 watt Marshall and I'll do two tracks and then I'll take the DI from them both and put them through the sims. And, you know, if you, sometimes you got to flip the phase cause it's not, you know it's not correct yet but and then i'll combine the sims and the amps and man it, it's really cool to bring in a sim that has mids instead of just turning up mids you know um i, I try to combine sounds frequent frequency wise well i think my know? favorite so thing about sims as a that. producer is uh that i get so many different sound choices almost immediately I'll repeat that ken I said, uh, one of my favorite things as a producer is I get so many sound choices I almost it's frozen now. Sound? Am I frozen? I'm not frozen. Oh, uh, I, I hear you, Ken. Okay, but, uh, yeah, I maybe he's maybe. Uh, Mike. Oh, he was frozen. Um, yeah, oh, like I can go go. through sixty sound choices in sixty seconds, and I'm gonna hear yeah. two or three of those sound choices that I I'm gonna go. I never would have thought about that. That gave me a tone that just was completely unexpected. And maybe I layer that into a main tone or maybe that becomes the main tone. And for me, that's Absolutely. just from a creative standpoint, that's how I lean on amp sims. Um, yeah. Just the constant scroll of uh, presets until I find something that's like, oh, that one. Yes, let's go. Yeah. Yeah. Right. What what company, what, what is your favorite amp sims? Neural, D using Neural DSP lately has there been my go-to. Go um, Don't make me go buy more plugins. Dude, they're <laughs> fucking nice, man. Yeah. Uh, I like the UAD stuff. I like the um the Amplitude stuff. Um, I oh, still yeah. use Amplitude 4 on a ton of stuff. I've been using Amplitude <laughs> since the beginning. Um, yeah, IK is but, my favorite stuff. <clears throat> man, those Neurals. Holy shit. Anyone? You know, my, my anyone favorite should... clean oh, is Scuff them. The, the S-Gear Scuff them. Oh, uh, yes. The, yeah. Amer the American Clean is my favorite amp sim clean. That's great. great. Yeah. That's yeah. definitely a go to. Yeah. For me, it's between the Scuffum and the old 55 Tweed. You know, depending oh, on the right. genre. The, the UAD. The UAD Tweed. Notes. Yeah, that thing is great. That's, and you got to try it in, in multi mono and in stereo because depending on really? you know what mics you're using, sometimes it, it doesn't work right. I, I forget which oh, one's wow. the right one. Yeah. Um, so you got to kind of check it in both. Nice. Any, but anyone that, tried uh great parallel? Anyone tried overloud overloud the U or overloud THU THU, THU yeah, yeah THU yeah. yeah. I I did on a, I did a session two days ago, and the guy I didn't know I didn't know I had that plugin, and he goes for my plugins, a guitar player. He yeah, pulls yeah. that up, and it's like wow, comes that's better than all my other stuff. It comes yeah, with slate, it's... and I like right. it because it has this whammy. It has a, a wah pedal. Oh, that that you can auto well, you know, for those who don't have a wah pedal, yeah, yeah, handy, you can automate that. Oh, okay. and it sounds oh, cool. real as shit, man. Yeah, I'm, I'm know. making so many notes. This is ridiculous. Yeah, you know, our, you our... know uh, if you're looking for a good plugin like that, Neural has it's the go G, I believe, the Gojira collection. And if you plug in an expression pedal, you oh. have a whammy. Forget. You have an instant win. I'm sold. I'm getting neural. I'm sold. <laughs> <laughs> and it sounds incredible. <laughs> Forget about it. I'm... Yeah. yeah don't people don't it. realize we pay to do this podcast because we each of us goes and buys five plugins after every episode. No, I hope Lou. I hope Lou watches this and like takes notes because he's always asked. He's like, "Let me know what plugins you need." You know? <laughs> yeah. Always, like, always. Bro, the show will tell you everything. Like, you yeah. know? Yeah. No, it's 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 addicting. I mean, but I am a huge Stephen Slate uh, plugins fan. You know, I just I, I like their stuff. We just had him on the show. Bro, well, one of my yeah. favorites is, uh, is the free one, the Revival. Oh, that's a great that's plugin. All right, all right. So 
yeah, the high end is beautiful. It's That's just insane. You know, Ooh, oh yeah, that plug is fire. It's just like instant sheen. Yep. Uh, <laughs> you guys, like you guys ever use the Bible, fresh air? Yes. Fresh air but a little fresh goes air. so far. Like fresh if I'm air. past ten on the high band on fresh air, I'm probably going too far. Yeah. <laughs> that ten is everything. <laughs> yeah, great stuff. Great stuff. What were you gonna say, Nico? His uh the FG gate or the I'm I'm not sure which gate it is, but the Steven Slate Suites drum gate is Dude. actually really pretty. Actually, yeah, the classic. That's probably the greatest gate I've ever used. Yes. Really? I agree. Wait, is that you talking about the pink one? Yeah. Yes. The oh, I use that shit all the time, man. The second one, not the not the right. first one. The because there's one for oh right, right. There's one for vocals, and there's one I think exactly. Yeah, the it's in the, it's in the that, virtual mix rack. That D bleed yeah. yep. stuff. Yes, that's it. That D bleed yeah. the game changer for. I'm yeah. sure other yeah. ones do it, but that well, that was the first one I owned that did it. Right. Yeah. Like, you guys like that better than the Oxford drum gate? I haven't used that. I yeah, I it has different Oxford features. Stuff. Okay. The drum gate's really good. It just has that like that deep bleed. Like there's one knob or I, I can't remember. There's some it's a specific use case kind of plug in. Yeah. Huh. So it's not it's not my favorite gate in the entire world, but it's like that one thing does one thing that yeah, most the gates deep, don't the do. The deep bleed on yeah. this late gate lets you set a different close time for a different frequency band. So you oh, can wow. so you can get just like the click of the kick if you have the snare bleeding into the kick. You can just let the snap of the kick through, and then you can close off down to say seven or eight hundred hertz, and you get yeah. the energy of the snare out of it, Amazing. and you let uh, the weight of the kick carry further, say a half second before it closes, where the top closes in like wow, that's 50, cool. two hundred milliseconds. Yeah. You can awesome. really tone shape incredibly well. And then and have you guys for deep, for deep leading, so the hi hat right out of a snare track. Oh, the hi hat, yeah. I mean, just and it really. There's no pumping and nothing. It's it's an incredibly intelligent algorithm. My God, yeah, that's Man. awesome. Slate for the win. Yeah, for the win. Yeah. For the win. Uh, have you guys done that with Surfer EQ? I know. So uh, Surfer Surfer EQ has a, a gate mode. I, is it Soundradix? I forget I who makes Soundradix. that, but I think but so, you could yeah. do a shelf like 10 dB down at like 5k. You know. And then you can have it to where the snare opens that shelf. And then when the snare is done, it closes. So you're yeah. basically gating with your EQ bands. It's, it's pretty crazy. Yeah, some guys deep lead with the multi-band compressor as well. Same kind of thing. It just, you know, it's you'll go much for me. down to, you know, 2K up and try and get that hi-hat out of a, out of yeah. a snare. You know, like that. Sounds yeah. like the slate gate is an easier way. It really is. Check, yeah, it's I'm going to check that out. You'll love it, <laughs> and, and and mic mic placement's important too, right? Like, uh, maybe uh, touch on that a little, um, because you know we don't really get too much tracking guys on here, you know, so it's it's really interesting to see that uh, yeah. you're still doing bands and rock bands at, at that, you know. Yeah, like, I, I'm the you know mostly that's all I do, you know, and um, I what's, just, what, what's your go to mics? Oh man, you know, I was an Audix guy for a long time, and I love the all the D2s. Uh, they have a they just cancel out other parts okay. of the kit, you know. They're kind of, right. they're right there on the. They're very the, directional. Yeah, the tone source is, is it, you know, right on on spot. So I loved them for a long time, but I just signed with a company called SE Electronics, and I gotta say, they have this V V Drum Arena series. Um, it's incredible. The great sounding, man. The attack, you know, on, on these uh, on these mics just incredible so i've been Pretty using dope. se now for about six months i'd say wow just tracked the album with Corey with them um wow i'm digging them man the v series they're called from se electronics it's like a kit they have a, a yeah they have a whole a whole kit for, for drummers yeah you know and they're they're really nice because they they clip on but the actual um the cable the way they do it i wish i could we we'll grab a few of them. Very, very great the way they made these mics. So they're not in the way of, you right. know, a guy comes in, he puts his cymbals right over the toms. It's like, man, come on. They made it with drummer <laughs> with drummers in, in mind. Yes, yeah. because guys like to have their cymbals lower. And then, well, what, what do you do with the tom mics, you know? Right. Um, so these are 
specifically made to, you know, be out of the way, so to say. What do you like on uh, on guitar cabs? Um, you know, I mean, I'm the classic 57 guy. Um, I used to do a, a 421 and a 57, or you know, do the uh, the 257s in the in the Friedman technique, just kind of like this. Um, yeah. Are you a are you a 121 guy or not so much? I, I do, I do, I like that as well. Yes, um, I've also used Neumanns. I've had a TLM 103 on guitar on or N2 102 and a 103 on guitars as well. That's a great mic for guitars. Can you speak to any one particular setup that you like better or that mm -hmm. gets you a certain tone or your, yeah. you know. Um, I mean, the, to be honest, the 57 and the Sennheiser 421s worked forever, you know, because you get the body from the 421, but the, the 57 goes closer to the center cap, whereas the 421 is, on, is off of the cap for a warmer spot. And the combination is just there. It is, you know. Four twenty one for toms too, man. Are so like. Oh man. Classic so and just the greatest, like, but they're it's huge. Hard, it's hard to beat them. Yeah. <laughs> they right. they need to make a right a right angle four twenty one that just comes oh up. Oh my god! Goes, <laughs> Why that would be the best that, invention ever. Yo, you I'll know they should, just, they should just come out with a mic that has like the rim clips on it. They do. Well, yeah. not the four twenty ones, but that's what you're well, on, right. Your specifically, four twenty one with a rim clip. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, yeah. The Audix D twos you can just clamp right on, and they're real small. They're, they're great, you know. Yeah, that's but, yeah. I meant to bring this up last uh, show when Slate was on, but um, so I'm a fan of the forty seven Fets on the kick, oh, yeah. like like I think it, it just brings like a, a thump. You know what I'm saying? Like mixed probably with the D12 or, or like a yep exactly you know? yeah the D but, you know the D12 in in the in the hole or close to right. the hole and then the the Boys. fet like two two feet back. I would put sometimes like on a kick yeah. that needs more thump. I would put the emulation 47 from the slate. Uh, oh wow! I throw that on a kick and it would just beef it up, man. So sometimes yeah. a little too much, but you know. You dial it back a little because you have that percentage slider for the mics. Have anyone yep. tried their uh their studio line mics like the the instrument mics? They had like a whole the slate. Yeah, anyone? I have the I have it right here. I have the slate that whole mic system. Is that what you're talking about? The yeah, yeah, with the pre's with the with, with the pre's. Uh, yeah, yeah, I have the uh the the VM. You talking about this one? This guy. The VM two, I guess. The one, the one is the vocal mic. This the two, two is the little. This one. So do you have the little? Yeah, this is like little the... guy, the condenser. Okay, so yeah, oh, so the that's... ML one. Oh, there you go. Uh, yeah, I had. I only have the the vocal one, the big one. Right, me too. I, I'm curious to hear the the ones they made for like instruments, like for. Me too. Yeah, to I haven't those, heard. Those, it. those look great. I mean, I I think it's a great system. You know, the, when he, he demoed it at NAMM one year and he had a 1073 and the whole, you know, matched the, the golden chain right in front of yeah. my eyes. I mean, literally, I was like, all right, I'm sold. What, what, what else could you say? He did it right there in front of me. Great. Is that what you use for your vocals at your studio? Um, you know, I, I, I use this on a few albums. I just did an album with a, with a girl from uh, Europe. Uh, we did uh, an album for Frontiers Records. It was called Her Chariot Awaits. And uh, she's the, a singer from a prog band out there called uh, Serenia. Beautiful voice. I used it on that. Um, I used it to Neumann's a lot. The, the, the TLM 103s, I love. Okay. I'm just a huge fan of that. But this is amazing. And you call up the, the, the Sony C800 setting, and they have yep. all these different mics in there. I mean, they really do sound phenomenal i gotta say what's your, what's your opinion on the 102 103 any difference high end this that about the same um i think the 103 has a little I, for me a little bit more brilliance in the top end maybe or clarity maybe just a tiny bit some might say no maybe it's the one i got you, you know um it's, I just it's one it's number better more, nico yeah it's, yeah, it's plus one. That's right. right. I'm looking for some because I, I have a lot of experience with the 102, a little bit with the 103. It's nice, um, yeah. but I not enough to know 
you know yeah. um, i love it i've used it yeah. on tons of albums um you know my 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 hard rock band adrenaline mob all the albums were done uh, russell allen incredible wow. vocalist and i used i tried and you said you use them on guitars too what what kind of yeah. placement like where would you put it uh, uh the 102 and, and those i won't go right up to the cap right you know, right right because right. you never want to go i mean 57 is a cool for the center cone because you get the bite but they not on those it. kind of, yeah you know i would go back a little and off the cone right off the cone is a better spot because it's warmer you okay. know um, and they pick up those kind of mics just pick up everything you know for it's, sure for sure so uh that's that's usually where i go with it you know that was my first mic i ever had and, which uh, one the 103 oh yeah i love it yeah I, it's great killer can't go you know i just used it on the whole album with Corey glover and you know the dude's that's just sick. you know I mean, he could sing in a box, and right, right, right. <laughs> you know, yeah. but, you know, it really. Captured so, it. Mike, tell me about your pro wrestling career. My pro wrestling. <laughs> <laughs> who, who told you I was a pro? <laughs> Did we dig in the vault? Like, uh... <laughs> no, that no, be uh, <laughs> I was. Oh, uh, yeah. Reaching, <laughs> reaching over there, reaching. But, uh, <laughs> no, I was doing I'll some like, research. Yeah, uh -huh. I'll get my what's your what's what's my my biker career because everyone thinks I'm a biker. No, <laughs> right. <laughs> there happens to be a, a pro wrestler that shares your name. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> yeah. So nice. I was like, wait a minute, he's got he's got long hair, he's got a beard. Oh. Could that be? <laughs> Could be? I've never seen him in the same room at the yeah, same exactly. time. You never know. Man. <laughs> well, I thought it was Lou because Lou used to work for the WWE. He was a he worked with them. What? A lot of Let me find out, man. Sense. Wait, what? What? Let me find out. That makes yeah, a lot of sense. I'm almost positive <laughs> he was like a, a big security guy or something. Uh, yeah, he's had many lives, Lou. Big Lou, man. Nah, for sure. <laughs> Shout out, Big Lou, indeed. <laughs> I'm a huge W. I was. I mean, I don't watch it anymore, but I was a big wrestling. Fan. Yeah, you do. Yeah, you do. <laughs> all, right, all right, let's go. Let's go, everybody. Everybody, drop your favorite wrestling move. Oh, I'm gonna wrestling go, move for me. It's uh, I'm gonna go with the um, the German suplex. That's oh, easy I was one. gonna say suplex. Suplex uh, is fire. That's I'm, the easy I'm gonna, one. I go back to Jimmy Superfly Snooker. Jumping off the, that's a real way back there, way back <laughs> with the elbow. But a, a good when he close jump, line when he would is, jump, is he nice. would jump off the top rope like, <laughs> <laughs> to smack you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was a special yeah. move. I love it. I'm the yeah. pe I'm, I'm the people's elbow or the uh, throat slam, man. Uh, it's toss up. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but of course, of course, I love Chris Chris Jericho. He's he's my man. Oh, uh, classic. Not, yeah. not only a wrestler. But a fellow rocker, so I, I love Chris. Right, right, right. <laughs> Facts, man. Nice, nice. Yeah. Hell yeah. Good stuff. Yeah, ask Lou about his, his wrestling. Oh, I'm asking him for sure. <laughs> Listen, I've never seen I've never seen Goldberg and Lou in the same room at the same time. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Pieces are starting That's to good. come together. Yeah. 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 Little yeah. by little, we're catching... It's unrivaled, <laughs> you know. Yeah, we're calling Lou out. <laughs> That's great. That's crazy. So, so uh -oh. go ahead, Mike. No, I thought go it ahead, was freezing. Freezing. I was gonna say, Ken, did we ever talk about your your setup with your faders over there? So only two of all the faders that lost are here. We've only got two folks with faders at the moment. <laughs> yeah i've got the uh uh i've got a pair of ssl uf8s with a u with a uc1 controller in front of me and i was like i was telling you guys earlier when i first got them uh i was like why would this huge controller sit in front of me only control the channel strip and the bus compressor and then i realized what ssl did they overlaid an SSL digital console on top of Pro Tools. And if you 
don't want to look at Pro Tools, you don't really have to. You barely have to look at your screen. It almost feels dead on like being on an analog console again. And wow. I'm, I'm selling my uh, AWS 900 Plus in mint condition if anybody wants to buy it, inquire within. Um, I'm in Atmos land, so I can't really stay in analog land. I miss it. But this yeah. felt instantly like I was back in analog land mixing. Uh, so do you put an SSL plug in on every channel or a lot of channels or? Yeah, yeah, you start your mix with an SSL on every single channel, and then you can hit the SSL 360 button, and it just pulls an SSL screen. Wow. It looks like an SSL uh, template in front of you instead of a Pro Tools template. And you can really? literally so work far. off, you've got controller functions, and you can literally work almost exclusively without the mouse. Um, Dang it, can you? Know, without the screen. <laughs> Put that phone you down, Bob. Question. <laughs> you, you got me writing down more stuff. Check <laughs> out. And you see the faders and I mean the uh, the meters like do you get a meter yeah. bridge and everything. Yeah, it's got uh, meter bridges on each uh, fader bank, and you can skip through fader banks really easily. Uh, it's kind of like the CLA yeah. hub, right? I haven't used that, but it's, I, it's... I haven't. I mm. this is the only controller I've ever had because I had an SSL in front of me before this, mm -hmm. um, an analog console. So, but this has got like the fader strips, and it's got the channel names on it, and the panning setting, and I can pretty much visually look and see where i'm at uh with all my controls all at once and it like i said if you want to forget about the mouse and the screen for a while you can go into ssl wow. and just work like you're on a desk cool yeah it's pretty that's convenient. insane it's about time yeah yeah now i was really now surprised. we gotta now we gotta look for like very not variable but like choosing your meter bridge from whatever console you want and all that kind of customization <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, speaking about that, I saw a company that sold. Uh, uh, it was just like a VU meter. Um, but it was uh, it's digital. Um, it's a plugin. Oh man, I can't remember the name of this company, but it's really cool and it changes color. It actually um, like adapts to whatever mm -hmm. color scheme you have or whatever you know going on, and oh. you can have it like a standalone app you know and it's just, it's just giving you levels spitting out you know rms lufs spectrum analyzer yeah. all that stuff i can't remember the name man i gotta i gotta oh, look it up it'd be really great if tc electronics on the clarity m if they could just add in LUFS? just something for fun like a, a vu meter no because oh, you have yeah. like the you have the you know tv one where it's over time then you have of course the regular meters and the rta and stuff like that and the stereoscope the i think they call it v scope but it'd be cool if they just had like an old school vu meter yeah you know i think you there. can buy one i think they got i think they got them that you just buy them separately or whatever i think i've seen that yeah yeah Mm -hmm. But the Clarity M, how you like it? Like, is it missing anything? Because I want to get one just because I see everybody with. No, it. it's a ten. It's a ten. <laughs> it's a ten. It's so I always get this question. It's like, can I just do that in Isotope Insight? And it's like, yes, you totally can. <laughs> <laughs> but it's just something about having it right there. You just always like, it's easier. Right yeah, yeah, you're just fact. like boom. Here's that you literally you're working on a frequency or whatever you're working on a care or vocal and you know that there's something in the low that's kind of bumping up and you just look down and you literally see the one guy bumping up and you're like scroll over what is that 315 or whatever okay let me check in the 300 so yeah um it's it's that and then the stereoscope thing is kind of cool and the phase meter for sure those are cool. super important man it's, it's to like, have like right again, there yeah it's like something that I would almost have a second computer screen just for the isotope plugin to do and always be running you could do that as an option but it's like uh, i can get a second computer screen or this thing which has a bunch of other cool features you know the, cl the clarity m is what like 500 or is it more yeah. it's, it's 500. like 500 i think if you get like just a stereo one it's like 400 500 for stereo and 71 or some shit like that what do you guys use for metering? Uh, Ken, Bob, Mike, do you guys have any specific metering go to? Right. Yeah. Just... I'm I'm a simpleton. Right. I'm a real like uh, insight. I love it. I, I love use it. insight. Insight. Yeah. 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 I love the isotope stuff. I mean, it's great. I even I'm a for mastering now. I'm I'm uh, thrilled with their ozone nine and ten. It's just great. 
Yeah. Yeah. If it if it wasn't seven thousand dollars, I would get the old school SSL oscilloscope in the console. Oh man, they do they do sell them, but they're like four to seven grand. Wow. Oh. So, I don't well, need it that that's why <laughs> PC, PC Electronics does the the or the you know the Clarity M or whatever. It's like I said, it's yeah. Bucks. I'm sure it's not you get the, the same, but it's close. Well, right? I yeah. still, it's, yo, it's it's. Let me just tell you, it's fucking cool to look at. <laughs> no, I'm I sure. still finish my mixes with just a bypassed uh, Slate FGX, um, because I that's yeah. the meter that I trust for RMS. And Fire. That, I, I and my rms hits between yeah. minus seven and minus 10 depending on what i'm mixing and how i want it to sound yeah and that's my final volume and i just use it for metering alone it's not it's not like it's a bad finishing box but there's slightly yeah. better choices out there but yeah. the metering has always been my go-to you hear that have y'all? you tried that the fgx2 yet Ken? i have um i, I haven't Still used it much thing. it's okay mm-hmm. it's the the yeah. metering is now digital, um, like numbers instead of the bars, and I'm just used to reading bars. Oh so, yeah, I you think know, you can change it too on the FGX, right? Uh, you can you can change it from LUFS to RMS. I'm not sure if you can change uh, it from digital to PPM meters. Got you, got you. Um, but I mean, it's a, you can still translate what you need to. Nice, nice, but, nice. Yep. Now it's cool to hear. You know, everyone got caught up with the whole LUFS and LUFS world recently yeah. you know Yo, but what's cool love's to got you. to do with it what's love got, <laughs> got to do with it oh that was good, that was good. <laughs> that's nice. great man yo ken you got to put out some some merch bro dude i, <laughs> I did a whole oh, segment dude. on mixing night called Wait. what's love's got to do with it in oh. july 2021 <laughs> oh my God. i gotta go and, and watch all of those man i gotta go oh. back and look at all of those Oh, they yeah, so fun. Nice we're, great. we're about to have our three year anniversary. Our our three year anniversary uh is March 29th for mixing night. Our next show is April twenty or is April fifth, uh Wednesday, April fifth, eight to ten PM Eastern for anybody who doesn't know what mixing night is. Um mm-hmm. and it's gonna be a fucking throwdown. We're trying to do the AI episode. Um <laughs> it's I've been so fucking busy with work. So we're we'll pull something interesting together. It'll be a good oh. Speaking on AI, did you get? I'm late to the to the party, I'm sure, but I guess plugin plugin Alliance has a plugin called Monolith or Mono. It's a plugin where you basically you put it on all your tracks and it balances out the levels for you. Have you guys saw this Great. plugin? What <laughs> it yeah, has yeah, begun. Yeah, no, I have I have a screenshot. I'm gonna tell you right now, but it's it came out like 2021. So I'm like, wait, how come I'm just I'm just now yeah. seeing this? I have not heard of this. It's plugin alliance, man, and that's another thing. They put they put out so many plugins that it's just so hard they to do. keep up. Yeah. Yeah, they got some great ones, but man, how can you find them? Uh, yeah. It's called. What's your what's what's your uh huh? My bad. No, it's called Mix Monolith. Uh, A Y A I C Mix Monolith. Interesting. Okay. Hmm. Uh, my plugin alliance go to is still BX Digital. Oh, the, those, they just they just dropped the uh amec mastering compressor which actually isn't amec anything um they did that for licensing because uh oh. they own they own amec and they can do that but it's actually the gml uh 8900 which is such a unique compressor if you guys have ever used it it's the only compressor of its kind and it's uh yeah. it's got release hysterious and crest factor and stuff you can really do some amazing stuff with it but uh they modeled it and they called it the amec mastering compressor wow. so if you guys ha- if you guys have that check it out it's unique it's really cool that sounds great nice, cool, man. nice. sale my oh, favorite man. stuff is still the mog just because it's almost on every Mag. 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 <laughs> and then of course the bx stuff their sub synth their refinement oh man they have everything in that suite refinement what is, the mog? What, is what the mog i don't what is the mog mag mag, mag mag eq oh that the <laughs> mag. 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 <laughs> yeah the air band yeah i like the, the nicest the yeah. nicest guy in the world cliff mog if you ever Yo, meet the, him the, at nam he's the nicest guy in the world he's, really? he's santa claus yeah so yeah that magnum no, k so compressor cool. is 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 crazy yeah so I'm plugging them, it's I'm nuts them it's pretty mind. sweet on vocals and yeah that air band even i'm gonna give y'all some sauce 
Oh, sauce time. <laughs> Shout out. Mixed by Nina Homegirl told me about this a while ago. The low and the sub knob on the Mog EQ, Mag EQ, whatever you want to call it, on vocals. Mm -hmm. We got some warmth. Oh. Body. Nobody nobody well, thinks to turn up the sub knob. 10 hertz? On, yeah. On, yeah. Yeah. I use on Max vocal, Bass on vocals. It's... I love Max Bass. Exactly. Wow. That, it's that vibe. It's that vibe. It's kind of like you low cut some and kind of want to put some back in kind of vibe or something, you know. Yeah. Whatever. I'm not a thin vocal kind of guy, man. <laughs> as long as you control the resonances down there, you can get a nice big, you know, like yeah. I always think of vocal EQ as the low end is the size and the mud. The mid range is the clarity and the harshness and the top end. Well, I think the, the mid range is more like the enunciation and the but also the harshness and the and the high frequency is more like the clarity or the s's and mm -hmm. uh you know that kind of shit and so i, I kind of think of eq in those three ranges and i always you know yeah. make sure that they're all taken care of mm -hmm. yeah. yep i just got these two pieces made from this company called audioscapes oh, yeah. yeah what do you think of they're that stuff they're, they're, they just made me two Poltex style ones. Man, they're so nice on vocals too. Yeah, I have two of those oh, in my yeah. studio. Oh, oh nice. Yeah. yeah, I love those. I love that company. It's just fantastic. Yeah. The, the Poltex are magical. Like they're and they're yeah. and they're inexpensive, but man, they're worth coming out of the box for. Yeah, I, hardware. I got yeah, hardware. yeah. I I eleven hundred bucks. That's right? Yeah, bad. it was like twenty twenty three or four yeah. for both. Yeah, it was. A no brainer, and yeah. there, yeah, big shout out. Yeah. Out. Just running through them flat, no EQ, like just gives this density yeah. to your mid range. It's like yeah. amazing, yeah. and then of course, when you engage the EQ, it's even better, yeah. Uh, and that, of course, the classic, you know, the low and the the same yeah. attenuation and boost thing. It's, it's such a cool thing, just but their, their high end is so. I mean, I don't have two real Poltex to actually a B2 because they're so much money and they always say like you'll never get two that are the same anymore right. you know because I, I like to put it on a stereo mix too right. sometimes. and you know so i figured the new ones would be better you know not better you know what i mean if you yeah i mean consistent yeah if you're ever right. in miami and at criteria um the c oh, room yeah. the c room i think has two Dude, but i'm not sure which ones they are piano oh. in that c room Oh yeah, it's amazing. That, that, that live room, that live room is incredible too. Yeah, that's that, great. Do you ever just sit and play that Layla piano in Studio C? For anybody who doesn't know, Criteria Studio C, if I if my memory serves, has the piano that they recorded uh, Eric Clapton's Layla on, oh, which is man. one of the most classic piano sounds of all time. And oh, if you sit oh. down and play the first chord of Layla on that piano, it oh. sounds exactly like that yeah, piano. You get goosebumps. Wow. Else really wild experience that is fantastic jeez yeah Amazing. i haven't been to criteria in a while but what, man that was a what, dope spot what kind of piano is it yamaha i think yamaha got nine how nine. long eight nine, a nine jeez. yeah big boy wow yeah what, what, what's 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 some of your guys favorite uh Man, like, you know, I've assisted on a lot of tracking sessions and seen some of the greats mic stuff up. And, like, so I'm curious to, like, you know, cause I've done it a few times myself, but I'm curious to know what you guys, uh, what some of your favorite go-to mics and stuff for, like, pianos or just, you know, <clears throat> capturing yeah, that it, stuff. My favorites are Neumann 249s, M249. Uh, oh, wow. Amazing piano mics, and very few studios have them. I know two two forty nine, not the one, not the not the one M M two forty nine. They look like eighty seven sixty sevens, but wow. they're um, yeah, they're awesome. Is it forty nine? Yeah, uh, I think it's M two forty nine. But uh, Sick. in our NRG in uh, North Hollywood has those, and then we had some in Nashville, and uh, they just sound incredible on piano. Jeez. Wow, I think it always depends on what you're going for. If you like. I'll usually put like an XY of a pair of small diaphragm condensers over like middle C kind of close to the hammers. And then I'll put a large diaphragm condenser 
over the bass strings and I'll try and get that as in phase as possible. And, and the, the mic at the bass strings is really just to give the piano warmth and richness and the pian and the mics at the hammers are to really give it definition. And clarity. Right. Exactly. You can so hear the hammers nice. like press. Right. And, like press. and then right. if you want, you know, a more ambient sound, then you put a stereo pair of large diaphragms, you know, six feet back and capture a full picture of it. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. I really like the coals on piano. I learned that oh, over. Wow. Yeah. Oh. Wow. Shout out are coals really are cool. coals the pencil? Um, not pencil, but they're like kind of like taper a little down. No, they look like headphones they're, almost. Oh, I know. Yeah. What you're the ribbon yeah, mics they're big big, big round they're kind of alien heads and a lot of people use them for drum overheads but mm -hmm. they're uh they're great mics but yeah the ribbon so dope man yeah i use my yeah. uh, royer 122s for overheads and yeah, love great. they those really give great. a great picture and they soften up the cymbals nicely and yeah um, ribbon mics have a, such a real quality to them i've seen um c12s like two c12s on the I used C12s at East West a few months ago under the piano for a client. Oh my god! And yeah, I I didn't think it was gonna be cool, and it was great. They they suggested it, and we just put them up under the soundboard. And that's I, used, I used a pair of C12s for drum overheads at Emerald oh, yeah. tracking room. Oh my Emerald. god! Wow, <laughs> that was nuts. Beast, I was like, right? "What can I get for overheads?" And he's like, "Well, how about a pair of C12s?" And I'm like, "Stop right there." <laughs> <laughs> Bring them on. <laughs> that That's Emerald crazy. was such a vibe. Oh, Emerald, man. like, it's like it, the quintessential country studio. It's like you, it's, I don't even know how to describe it. It's like the only thing that's more country is, is Dark Horse in Franklin, Tennessee. Oh, yeah. It's just all wood. It's residential, and like, right? Have you worked yeah. there? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I mean, man. I started in Nashville, so I, I worked at all kinds of right. studios there. And, uh, dark horse like you're literally sitting at the trident and you look outside because the control room window looks outside and you just see a horse galloping <laughs> crazy that's my kind crazy. of spot yeah 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 my kind of spot definitely. i got <laughs> i got my little place down in ecuador that's uh i just have a little studio in in my apartment but we're overlooking the ocean from the studio oh wow nice. I tell you, there is nothing better in the fucking world than making music next to an ocean God. oh my god <laughs> that's <laughs> wow that's big fact. that's awesome you got to oh, make destination studios more of a thing yeah, absolutely yeah We've this been is talking about that's my like people private destination <laughs> right 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 <laughs> And a lot of times it's tough. Speaking of which, Ken, do you ever have issues with being so close to the salt water and stuff like that? I know there's no. I I pack up all the gear whenever I leave and and put as much of it as I can in airtight uh, containers. And oh, uh, wow. you know, so over time, it you know it gets two weeks of rust every time I go down, and eventually this piece will go and that piece will go. But it's not hasn't been a big issue. I've lost a few speakers and a couple monitors. Uh -huh charge it to the game yeah yeah but otherwise the gears held up well the it, spots made if you guys ever want to uh, partner and go uh go half and half on a studio in the virgin islands man let me know because uh <laughs> that's that's, that's been my dream man <laughs> i'm from the virgin islands and i think like the real estate out there and it's so beautiful i think it would be amazing but it'll, it'll have to be like a boutique you know here's the one problem hurricanes oh yeah oh man Hur hurricanes uh salt water like like nico was talking about oh, but that. ecuador we don't even get tropical storms oh man no hurricanes no tropics. so there's never a time where i've got to be like if i don't get there and button up the hatches i might lose my place right and right. that is like a tremendously calming feeling because we thought about looking in the caribbean and i was just like man all those fucking hurricanes it's, it's a lot of matter of time even Florida too, it's yeah. Risky. Especially Florida, jeez. Right. Been getting oh, pummeled. Yep, for sure. Jeez. There's nothing you can do a lot of times. As much as you try to preemptively whatever, I mean, there's just damn Mother it, Nature's gonna do what she does. Facts. Yeah, she's yeah. gonna laugh. I have, I have uh, I've been in a, a band since 2015, based out of uh, Sao Paulo, and we have an incredible recording facility there. Wow. literally one session a hurricane just right down the block just touched right down 
wiped out the whole place. It's like you just you never know, and you know, overseas, it's just, and that was it. No electricity. And I suppose you know Brazil, like they probably didn't have the greatest insurance either, so they kind of everybody <laughs> lost their investment. You, insurance. What insurance? What are you taking a stab. About? Taking yeah. a stab, and, and then that's why you know, like I'm sure everyone knows this, but to reiterate it, you gotta you gotta back your stuff up. Like have two, three backups, and don't have them in the same place. You know, like you gotta have Reach. them like cloud backup. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Homer Bryson that. says, if it doesn't exist in two places, it doesn't exist. It doesn't exist. Yeah. That's for sure. If, yeah, you're living on the edge. If it, you know, <laughs> living like a wild man. Yeah. If it's in, <laughs> exists on think, just one drive, I think most of us have done that in some part of yeah. our career, and then lost shit that we. That's were wild like, living. Never gonna get that back. <laughs> yeah, I had, I had to, my early days. I had to melodyne an entire album over. Oh, so that was my lesson right there. It's like, oh, I'm not doing that anymore. <laughs> oh shit! No, man. My biggest lesson was I was on the road with bird and uh like we we were working on a project but it was you know like when you're on the road like oh now i know you know you back up every day you know no no matter what you know what i'm saying but we were like working out the condo you know what i'm saying uh like weird hours you know um you know yep. just like very on the fly you know right leave Always you know moving move. right leaving cities and stuff so I came, I left the condo, came back. I left the condo with my laptop open, hard drive plugged up, everything, right? Came back uh, two hours later or something. Hard drive's unplugged. Oh. But it's on the table next to my laptop, but it's unplugged, right? So I'm like, what the, what the fuck, you know? <laughs> Hook it back up, wouldn't, wouldn't mount. Oh you know, man! Tried everything, wouldn't mount, you know. And I literally lost maybe like a few days of work, not too much work, but it's just those little few days that I didn't back up. Yeah. I couldn't, I couldn't regain. And then you know, I had to tech look at it when I got back to Miami, and it had a crack down the middle. It was a spinning oh. hard drive, crack down the middle. You know, they're like, we can't really recover anything from this. <laughs> wow. I'm gonna give you guys somebody, my favorites. Somebody my favorite. walked by. And knocked it over, and it was yeah. Like, a cleaning whoa. lady definitely knocked it over. Yeah. Cleaning lady probably knocked it over, and you know she just put it back up, and yeah, just like my, that. My favorite that. story from that is uh, I was working with Havoc from Mob Deep. Um, actually, this was uh the night Biggie died. Um, wow. And uh, but I used to record him a lot, and he had an MPC. One night he had a bunch of girls in the studio and bottles and, you know, everybody was partying and uh, he wasn't backing up his beat. And I was like, yo, Hav, you need to back up your beat. Somebody's going to kick that power out and you're going to lose everything. He's like, oh. no, no, it's magic, dude. That's, we're not losing. Oh, man. Magic. I'm like, like an hour later, yo, Hav, bro, she almost kicked it out, bro. Please just back that shit up oh. before you lose. Kicked what? The power out or? Uh... Yeah. Sure oh. enough. Is the power sure cord to that Somebody NPC. kicked the power out of the NPC and he lost his entire beat that they had been r rhyming, like writing to, and and the whole it was just gone. And He's he like, like, you jinxed uh, me, Ken. He, well, no, he looked at me and he was like, <laughs> You were right, bro. Uh, Dude. And he made another one. So, you know, what can you do? Yeah. You never know. We have a DVD that we're we're editing now. The band that I perform in in uh, South America with, and we just did uh you know, our last big tour, one of the stops was in Sao Paulo. It's a place called Tom Brazil. Beautiful place, like 3,000 seater. And um, so we filmed the whole tour, but specific spots are the, the better spots, the bigger spots. And an intern dropped the hard drive. And we lost, we have the video and no audio. How that happened, I have no idea. <laughs> it's like, oh, my goodness. Yeah, oh. So we, so all we have is the video. All, like 10 camera shoots. Uh, <laughs> and the audio's gone. It's like, oh my gosh! Are you kidding? Ah. Me? Yeah. Jeez. Well, you could always put the uh, the album cut in there. Yeah, yeah. Get a voiceover. Yeah, yeah. I, I had a a band. There was a club in L.A. called the Whiskey, and they played at that. Uh, I think the fiftieth anniversary. This yeah. band, and on purpose, they redid the audio on oh, everything okay. except the overheads and some of the vocals 
So they were literally had it on the screen and they were there playing one at a time, guitar, bass, oh, wow. and then we sound replaced the, the drums and then the vocalist yeah. came in and sang certain I've, ones. So I've done that. Crazy. Yeah, so it's like overheads were live, nothing else. You know? <laughs> I've done exactly that. It's horrible. Yeah. On what are... award-winning live albums. Yeah, <laughs> I love it. Yeah. Probably why they won the award because they sound so good. They did. There you go. There you go. It was like it was like what you were saying, Mike. Uh, I mixed this album for this metal band, and it was a six uh, six camera shoot with two forty eight track reel to reel digital uh, machines right. going. They yeah. spent like a hundred grand capturing it, and it sounded like shit. So they brought yeah. it to me to mix, and we were just like, "Oh God!" So we ended up we're like Bob was saying, we ended up replacing almost everything except for the overheads, some of the yeah. keyboards one of the guitars and occasionally yeah. a bass or something would stay, but every single vocal, you know, the, the singer would sing the same way every night on stage. So redoing in the studio was like amazingly yeah. not uh, difficult for him. And yeah. right. we did the yeah. whole album and then mixed right. it and it did well. Yeah. Those guys, I, those I mean, are... oh, go ahead, Mike. It's a nightmare. I mean, luckily we filmed a lot of shows. So I think there's audio from other shows and to be honest the band plays to a, a click track because we have um keyboards going and sound effects sure. you know it, it's an incredible band amazing talented um but they you know they have to play to the click because we're we're also synced to a giant led wall oh, so sweet. you know you have no choice it's um, yeah. so i think we could use one of the other audio shows and like you say you do it the same every night so it's you know Mm. yeah you could Great. capture another night and at least get enough for social media and maybe a release. yeah yeah totally exactly so. you, you know what's really funny i don't know if you guys remember during the pandemic uh there was these meme not memes but like these videos that went viral of like classic singers and but they'll have <clears throat> it was it was like the audio was laid over the video they'll have them on stage performing but the but it's the acapella and it sounds perfect and the, and the caption would be, man, look at how great these singers are, you know? And in my mind, I'm thinking, that's an acapella from a studio recording. You know what I mean? Yeah. Just wow. synced up to them performing live, but they yeah. are so tight yeah. that it looks exactly like them performing live. But yeah. I'm like, I'm listening to, I'm like, that's an acapella from the studio. There's no, you know, like, it's so clean. It's so clean. Great. Right. Yeah. But it's amazing how how on point and tight those guys were, man. Oh yeah, I mean it's cool because with this band we we would bring around. We had our own sound system basically. The drummer had a thirty two channel Allen and Heath system, and he would record every night his drums right off the mics. And like I say, the quad cortex goes direct, so he has my, you know, it captures everything pretty much. So dope, great, you know, right, right there. So. So it how did the audio kind of stuff, but. how did the audio get separated from the video have, or was it like a no separate idea. that's insane is that's just so out of the drop I, yeah. the hard drive still worked but just got corrupted it had to be i i i'm still dumbfounded how or maybe how there did... was maybe there was uh the video on one drive and the audio on another drive and the audio the one on that that drive is what got messed up maybe I, yeah, they haven't told me the whole story yet. <laughs> you they know, don't want to. They're scared. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I would be too. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But, so uh, what had happened was, uh, yeah. you know? Yeah. <laughs> I was told that an intern dropped it. That, that's it. Oh. <laughs> Bottom line yeah. is, back up your files, folks. Nice. And there you go. That's that's the, the moral to the story. Oh my God. And that's the bottom line. Because Stone Cold. <laughs> exactly. Does it? Does anybody here like work on mobile mixing or laptop headphones? Any of that kind of stuff? I definitely do. Yeah, all the time. Do you use? I'm I'm very curious because I'm not a headphone guy, um, but I really want to hear those Slate headphones. Oh yeah, that's the talk of the town, man. I know. Really good. Yeah. They are really good. Really? Yeah, they're good. They're good and they're light say, and comfortable. Okay. Yeah, let me just say they are just about everything they're cooped up to be. And the coolest wow. part I was telling them on the show last week, they just keep getting better. Um, I was fortunate enough to 
help them beta and stuff like that. And a, a week would go by and I'd be like, damn, dude, these are completely different. So oh. they really work hard to make things better. And that's one thing I could say out of experience. So, so the software is, it has, it's mainly has to do with the software, right? That's what they, use it with or without. Oh, okay. You could, but he did say that He's, it was really intended. That, yeah. yeah, that you're yeah, supposed right. to use it with, but I use it without all the time. Right, I, right. I, I used them for tracking last night and just plugged them right in and went. Yeah, I um, haven't heard it with the emulations yet. You know, that's funny. I was going to, since since that, I was like, you know what? I'm going to start using them for tracking more and more. I was always just subconscious that the artist would think, oh, I'm not used to this sound. It's it's a little bit of a different sound. It's not crazy different. It's just a little hair darker than most headphones because headphones are always super bright. Yeah. Um, it's just a hair darker, which is obviously more flat. Um, so I couldn't see why someone would want to complain, but yeah. I always use them in a pinch, but I definitely want to use them more and more now. I gotta I think I'm gonna order those. No, I heard they're yeah, great, they're, man. Yeah. They're great. I yeah, know, sure. I, know I, a handful of them. I don't I don't use the software, I just plug them in and I, I reference, you know, as I mix, I'll reference on the slates and on the uh Odyssey L C D X Cs. And so you recommend you would recommend them? Because I'm not a I don't yeah. I'm not pro at all these headphones. I'm a monitors guy. Well, you know? I, I think it's so right. important nowadays for your head for your mixes, your final product to translate to headphones because half or more of the people who are going to hear it are going to hear it on yeah. headphones. So, um, yeah. you know, in in that regard, uh, I think the slates are great bang for the buck. Um, okay. Yeah. Definitely can't go wrong with them. Uh, um, like nice. I said, they're great for tracking too. They're super light and uh, yeah. I like them for that. Whereas like the Odyssey uh, LCD XCs, I mean absolutely pristine sound replication but they're big on your head and you wouldn't want to wear yeah. them for more than 20 or 30 minutes at a time so you know i mix on speakers and i get close and then i put on the odysseys and i fine tune and then i check sure. yeah yeah you'll love the slates dude they're good i can't wait speaking of speakers so there you go so who's what are you using what does everybody use oh man you're using these go. wonderful blinds <laughs> right here <There> <laughs> The best sound. <laughs> My speakers sound so clean, they'll make you blind. <laughs> um, no, oh. I, I I really, really love my speakers right now. Um, my setup is Dutch and Dutch 8C. So they are what looks like a regular, you know, tweeter 8-inch woofer on the front, but it actually has two subwoofers on the back of each cabinet. So I've got four subs back there, and you can't I mean, even. It's all disgusting. It's disgusting. It's crazy. Yeah. You can't touch me. You can't. Literally, you can't touch me. That's crazy. <laughs> I say I with without with the exception. This is my honest to god opinion. With the exception of an eighteen inch subwoofer on the floor, these things are right up there with Augsburgers. Oh my gosh! Jeez, that's yep. what I'm using. Yeah. Is uh, yeah, refrigerator yeah, size Augsburgers at my place. Fire. Do you mix? Do you mix on them a lot, uh, Bob? At low level, I mean, obviously not blasting, but do you like ever go up on them and like just to like mix for clarity and stuff like that, or not? I only use the Osbergers. I do not have near fields. Oh, like, sick! Yeah, sick. Bob's setup is probably sick. my number one favorite setup in the world right now. I'm oh, that's crazy! And then my yeah, setup right now has to be close second. Wow. Yeah, they're I'm, not in. The, they're not softened. They're freestanding. So they're they're closer to me. They're very accurate, you know. So when we tune them, like we'll nudge them one inch, and the whole punch changes, you know. So it's a unique setup for mains. But yeah, I listen whisper soft, and then loud, and then medium. I'm I'm also not a guy who mixes at one volume all the time. I'm all right. over the place. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. Wow. yeah. Dope, great. man. So, but you never get that issue. Uh, I'm sure you got the 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 amp set up right, but sometimes I know the Osberger's got this warble, like a like a low like warble when you have it really low. I don't. I think it's the amp thing. It might be something. Yeah. I don't know, but uh, you also could be talking about the non Dave Malik for Osberger's because, right. like the old traditional Osberger's that are in so many classic studios, are right. a different thing than the new for Osberger's. Sure. For sure. For um, sure. Oh, wait, what he, do you have? He, the new. Yeah. You got the new ones? Yeah, yeah. He has the uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, and they they have I think the amps that I have, he has new amps now, but the amps I have now are banging Olsen, I believe. 
Okay. But um, but yeah, he has his new amp that he designed himself. The red and black uh, ones, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, it's a wild setup for sure. That's killer. Young Ken. Uh, I'm still rocking Adams. Oh, uh, me too. Yeah, like, yeah, they're working for me. Yeah. Well, uh, which ones do you guys have? Uh, I just moved up to the A8Hs for LR. Um, and I am debating doing Studio A uh, full Atmos and 360 with the A7Vs mostly around and the A8Hs in front. Um, and some nice. sounds. So, how about you, Mike? See. I have uh, the A77Xs. Okay. How are you liking those? Those are the dual ones, right? Yeah, they're super cool. And and I I have a set of the uh, the CLA tens on top, just for a different vibe. But I got to be sure. honest, I am pretty much ninety nine point nine percent I mix on just the Adams. I don't go over to those CLA tens much. You know. Right. I like the Adams, man. I think they're great. The clarity, you know, I don't mix it loud levels. I could still talk, you know. Yeah. Um, they're just for rock, you know. They, they're great. For me, yeah. You know, I don't know about all different kinds of music, but no, I love it. They work well and, for all different kinds. Yeah. And they're <laughs> and everything a great company, comes man. They, they sent me these these uh, speakers to, to try out. I said, I love them. They, they said, you got it, you know, they're yours. Fire. So it's like, uh, great customer service, and, and uh, you know, I stand behind the company. Really cool stuff. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Freed, what do you use? It's the uh, the ribbon tweeters. It's the high end. Is really, I don't know. If, you know, I guess that's their technology. That yeah, uh, the, like the ribbon. imaging and directionality of the atoms is yeah. it's really nice for me. The the high end is like really clear, but they're, it doesn't feel yeah. harsh. They're ribbon yeah, tweeters. Can, yeah. Yeah. Okay. You could listen for a long period of time, mix for a long period of time. And, and I feel like me, because I'm sitting right here and they're, they're right on the meter bridge um, on the Neve. And I feel like I'm kind of in the middle of the mix. Not that they're like, you know, a perfect triangle. Literally, I feel like I'm sitting in the mix. Right. It's really like you feel like depth around you. A little yeah. Bit. Yeah. I, I can, when I pan something, I can really, you know, I could feel it. Um, they just have great imagery. I guess. Super yeah. dope. Yeah. yeah. Reed, what are you using? Bob, I use um I use uh like so a uh, criteria is usually NS tens yeah. and um right. Genelex. Oh yeah. Uh, the ten thirty two A's, I think. Ah, we have okay. those in front. Oh yeah. Or the B's. Which ones are the smaller ones? The B's or the A's? There's like two sizes. A. I can't the A are the smaller ones, right? Yeah. yeah, that's so that's that's the ones we got. And then um at home I use the Yamaha HS8s. Oh, oh those are cool. Yeah. My friend has those. Great yeah. speaker. I love them, man. They they yeah. translate great. They're very good all around, you know. Yeah. Um they obviously have more bass than the a regular NS10, you know. So yeah. like they're good all around, man. They're not bad. But they're not hyped. It's not like yeah, a hype it's not hyped. It's not It's hyped. still like a true, you know, yeah, it's yeah. you're not dialing in less bass because you're you know they hyped it up right know? right yeah that's cool My, a buddy of mine just uh, he does a lot of uh symphonic orchestration and stuff like that he just got the atc 25s oh wow yes yeah 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 those are good a lot a lot of guys use those yeah they're they're a lot i feel like a lot of these are what evolved from the taste of the engineer with an NS10, right? Mm -hmm. So it's like some guys want an NS10 with this. Some guys yeah. want an NS10 plus that. <laughs> and, you know, these kind of things spread out and kind of seeded from that. That's just something. Or like the up. R-tones, right? You, you go even yeah. more further shitty sounding. <laughs> the R-tones the R -tones is like, R-tones, man? Like, no, the, forgiven, the speaker on the half-inch machine, that was always the go-to. Oh, oh yeah, that was great. Reference the mono speaker on the half inch wow. uh, tape machine. Oh, I couldn't imagine. That was that was the oratone of the day. I mean, we had. I wanted. Uh, I wanted NS tens with dual eighteen inch subwoofers, so that's what I did. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't they always say that a uh, Bob Clear Mountain would use like Optimus Radio Shack monitors? Sometimes he would. I, I, Optimus I, sevens. 
Falcon you know, the Seven is a little square, square guy. That's it. Yeah, yeah. That's what yeah. I always heard. I'm like, I mean, he's one of my favorite mixes of all time. I was like, oh my god, I guess it. You can get if you get used to it, right? Yeah, dude. Uh, the that's Beastie what, Boys, uh, yeah. check it out remix. Just Blaze produced it, and I mixed it, and. I went down the street to Best Buy and bought a boom box off the shelf with an aux input and wow. brought it back to the studio and hooked it up behind me. And I did half my mix on the boom box and half on the speakers. Wow. So and crazy. That's from awesome. that moment on for probably the next 15 years, half of my mixing was done on a sharp off the shelf boom box. And go. nothing ever left the studio until it sounded amazing on the boombox and amazing on the atoms and amazing on headphones. And then it was wow. nice. What that the is fuck? so great to hear. That's great to hear. I love that. Because I, I know guys that have mixed on, the, you know, Mackie 824s, HRA 24s for ages. And it's like, well, you're used to it. I, I used to use them too, and I got used to them. It all depends what you're used to, man. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Well, the those boomboxes make you work. If it sounds oh, yeah. big on that, oh, yeah. it's gonna sound big everywhere. Yeah, Fact, yeah that's... man, and and you hear a lot of like if your kick is too loud or you know like stuff like that really jumps out on a boombox. Like, yeah, yeah. it's nice. more of a consumer experience Whoa. than a pro experience. Yeah, yeah, You're right. yeah. You got to kind of turn that on and off too. Like, you got to be like, okay, I'm not looking for a huge thing. I'm I'm looking for this certain picture. It takes a little bit of a learning curve there too sure. but then like you said ken if you if you can figure out how to make it sound huge there then your job is done yeah, yeah that's a thing like you you have that immediacy between your main monitors or your near fields and your boom box and you can switch back and forth in real time and go like okay yeah. what's the listener gonna hear what am i hearing what's the listener gonna yeah hear? okay and it really helps well, dial. And same thing it, with it, headphones you yeah. know the, exactly. the craziest thing is i i delivered a mix uh like two days ago to a client and it was it was shocking what he said, but it, it it is today. This is what it is. He goes, I know if it sounds good on my phone, it's great. And it sounded great on my phone. I go, wow, that's where we're at. The phone. That is the truth. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that is. I, I mean, I hate to say it, but I was like, you got me. You're right. I guess you're right. There's a uh, there's a free plugin um, called Sonobus, S-O-N-O-B-U-S. Okay. And you get the app on your phone. And you get yeah. the Artaz plugin, and you can broadcast your your mix to your phone. So whether you do your wow. phone with Air, AirPods or you just listen to the phone speaker, I'm writing so, that um, down for sure. What? Yeah, I'm writing yeah. that down too. You <laughs> dropped that one before, and I couldn't remember it. Thank you. Sonobus. Yeah, Sono Bus. Yeah. Wow. You can do the same thing yeah. with audio movers, right? It's just a little more. Of yeah, a exactly. It's just a free one, and um, it yeah. it might be a little better sounding because it's on i don't know the fact that it's on your network or sure. i don't listen to i guess it's still going it's still going through the internet um okay the sound bus is right on your wi-fi network so right. maybe that's why it sounds a little better to me for that oh, purpose i gotta you know? got try it oh and the latency is fast it's better with sound bus than the audio movers for that instant mixing you know move a fader and you hear the reaction ah that's good to know yeah the listen to audio movers you got another like two seconds before you hear it you know i think i think audrio is like kaput yeah yeah that that was my first one before i found sound of audrio that was a good one if they, if they i don't even know if they support anymore so i don't know they're kind of out. nothing beats free. being out <laughs> that's right. right nothing like a free plugin let alone a free really useful plugin jeez <laughs> right right Stand on bus. i'm getting that well nice. we're getting towards the top of the hour gentlemen All it's right. been real i yes. appreciate you guys very much some dope dope very inspiring very technologic and emotionally advanced conversations here <laughs> so pretty you thanks you guys for being for here up. For real, thank oh, you, mate. Thank, thank you, mate. you for having me, man. Great conversation, dude. Such yeah. a pleasure. Such a pleasure. Don't forget to share, comment, like, and subscribe. And see you next time on Faders of the Lost Art.